Hi, everyone. I'm Jennifer Whitaker, trauma specialist, empowerment strategist, and shadow guide. And last week, if you watched the video that was in my newsletter, then you saw me talking about the SCARF model. And the SCARF model is a model that can help us understand our triggers a little bit better in those five different categories. And I wanted to follow up today with yet another model. And this model is going to help us understand what's happening physiologically inside our brains whenever there's a threat. So what's going on in your brain whenever there's a perceived threat that's causing you to pull away and protect versus what's happening in your brain when there might be a perceived reward that you're leaning in and reaching out for. And this comes from Dr. Dan Siegel. And Dan Siegel has created what he calls the hand model to help us all understand our brain physiology and just a little bit better because when we understand our physiology a little bit better, we can come to greater levels of compassion and empathy and understanding, not only for ourselves, but also for others around us. So we're going to start out with just holding our hand up. And this part right here, the, the wrist, this represents the spinal cord. Whenever you move up to the palm of the hand, the palm of the hand represents the brain stem. Now, the brain stem is the most primitive part of the brain. Um, it used to be called the reptilian brain. It's now being referred to as the survival brain because survival brain is more about its function. Reptilian doesn't have anything to do with function, so let go of that verbiage. This is our survival brain. This is what is hardwired for us to survive and it reacts in a nanosecond. So if there is actually a saber-toothed tiger that's that comes within distance where it's going to chase me or attack me, my brain is going to cause my body to react in a nanosecond. And before I have time to think, I'm going to react into fight or flight or freeze or some other survival state of the nervous system to help me get out of there. This is also the part of the brain that causes us to pull our hand back really, really quickly whenever we touch a hot burner on the stove. So this is the nanosecond reaction when there's a real threat. Now let's oppose our thumb over toward the pinky. This is the limbic area of the brain or the emotional brain. And within the emotional brain is the amygdala, which is the fire alarm in the brain. And there's also another part of this called the insula. So to give you a sneak peek, I'm going to talk about the insula next week. So hold tight for that because that's a really good one. Anyhow, I want to talk a little bit more about the amygdala amygdala today than the insula because the amygdala is what pulls the fire alarm and because this is the emotional aspect or the limbic aspect of the brain and it's very emotional driv emotionally driven and it takes a lot of information from the body so the brain and this is an interesting information that I want all of you to really listen to because this shocked me when I first learned it the nerves and the pathways from the brain to the body and back, that's a two-way street. And we've always heard that the brain is the master organ. Well, turns out that the information going from the brain down to the body is 20% of the traffic on that super highway. And that's and the information coming from the body going up to the brain is 80% on that super highway of information. So the brain is actually receiving more information from the body than it's actually sending to the body. So keep that in mind when next time you hear that the brain is the master organ that controls everything we do. Not exactly, because the brain actually reacts to the messages that the body is sending it. And so this limbic area sometimes is receiving emotional information and it will pull a false fire alarm tricking us into believing that there might be a saber-toothed tiger or a hot burner that we need to pull our hand back from when really it's not really a saber-toothed tiger it might just be our boss giving us feedback so think back to the last video when I talked about the scarf model and what what causes us to perceive that threat and pull back and go into protection. So look at the different categories 
in the scarf model. And you can see how the emotion can get triggered by sending a message to the, to the brain in the limbic area, pulling that false fire alarm. So let's go on to the next part of the brain. If you fold your fingers over and the orientation that I'm talking about is, let's say the eyeballs are right here and looking straight at you, just like I'm doing right now. This part here is the cerebral cortex. And this front part right behind the eyes is the PFC or the prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex is the smart part of the brain. This is our executive functioning. This is what allows us to be reasonable and rational. It's what allows us to lean in and socially engage with other people, um, to cooperate and to collaborate because we're not perceiving a threat. Therefore, we can think and be smart and be rational and intellectual. So our executive functioning is super important for us to be able to thrive and not just survive. Now, what happens to the prefrontal cortex whenever the limbic system or the amygdala within the limbic system pulls a false fire alarm? Well, we flip our lids. And when we flip our lids, we are operating purely from the survival aspect. Even though it's a false emotional fire alarm, we're still activating this whole aspect, both the brainstem and the limbic system to work together to save us and protect us from this false threat that doesn't really exist. And that is what's happening physiologically inside our brains whenever we get triggered and whenever we're pulling away and protecting from a threat. Now, I hope many of you are asking, how do I get my lid back on? What do I do when I realize I'm in this reactive knee jerk state and I flipped my lid? Well, let's shift to a quick breathing technique. And this is a heart math breathing technique. You can look it up anywhere. And I'm going to include below a link where you can watch a tutorial video and access it anytime you want. Or you can come back and watch this video because I'm going to take you through a really quick breathing technique. And I encourage you to do this with your eyes open and practice doing this in the moment and on the go. Practice when you're driving your car. Practice when you're walking down the sidewalk or walking your dog. Practice with your eyes open because it's not always possible to remove yourself from a perceived threatening situation, such as your boss correcting you or your mom or dad yelling at you if you know, you're know you a teenager or a child. Um, so the breathing technique is to focus your attention in the heart or chest area. And you can do that by thinking about the heart or chest area, or you can just put your hand here and gently touch it. And if you're talking to somebody in conversation, that could just be resting your hand here so there's that tactile touch. And as you focus your attention on the heart or chest area, slow your breathing down so it's deeper and slower than normal. And as you feel yourself slowing that breath down, start to count inside your head. So you're inhaling to a count of approximately five. And then you're exhaling to a count of about eight or longer. And each time you exhale, focus your attention inside your body and feel your body relaxing. See if you can feel your muscles, your jaw muscles relaxing and your jaw unclenching. See if you can feel your neck and your shoulder muscles relaxing and your shoulders being a little further away from your ears than they might have been. See if you can feel yourself sinking into the seat a little bit more with each exhale. And the more you do this breathing, even if you're driving or in conversation, whatever that is, and the more you feel yourself relaxing, what's happening inside of you physiologically is that long, slow exhale hacks the ventral vagal aspect of your vagus nerve. What does that mean? That is key to our the parasympathetic 
aspect of the autonomic nervous system. So if we want to activate the rest and digest or social engagement system, which is a function of the parasympathetic branch of the autonomic nervous system, that long, slow exhale while you are focusing inward on your body relaxing is what's going to hack that relaxation in your body. And the more your body relaxes, that fire alarm signal turns off your lid comes back on. And the more that you can breathe and relax, the more you can think and be smart and respond with grace to whatever situation you're in. I hope you have found this information valuable. And if you're finding my videos valuable, please subscribe and share with somebody else because I'm here to help people. And I hope you can help me spread the word and help other people because the more we understand ourselves, the more we can exhibit self-compassion. I hope to see you next time. And please do tune in next time when I talk more about the insula, because like I said, that's going to be a good one. I love brain physiology. And the more you know about how your brain works and how it connects with the body and how it can affect your mental and emotional state, the more you'll be able to work with it and exhibit self-compassion and self-empathy. I hope to see you next time, folks. Happy self-discovery. Thank you.